After COVID-19 splintered the workforce into a constellation of workers from home, many companies now are calling employees back to the office. A recent survey found 1,000 businesses uh, a survey of 1,000 businesses found that 9 out of 10 plan to return to the office this year. But going back to the office means the return of office meetings and the deadening feeling that comes with those meetings that your soul is being sucked from your body. So what can businesses do to bring more purpose to the in-person experience? My next guest wrote the book on it. Priya Parker joins me now in Studio 57. Thank you so much for being here. Before we get to the questions, I have lived under this because my wife, a small business owner, has read this and applied your principles. Wow. So let's, let's start with the first question of chapter one, which is decide why you're really gathering. Why is that important? The biggest mistake we make when we gather is we assume that the purpose is obvious. Oh, I know what a wedding is. I know, I know what a funeral is. I know what a staff meeting is. And... In assuming that the purpose is obvious, we skip too quickly to form. And actually, the purpose is not obvious. It's not often shared. And in not actually pausing and asking, why are we doing this? What is the need in this moment with this team or with this family? We default into old forms that often don't work. They're deadening to the soul, as you just said. They may have worked for another team or another company or another family decades ago but we are basically on autopilot in our gatherings. And when we don't pause and ask, why are we doing this? We get boring, staid, repetitive gatherings that most people don't wanna be at. And we wanted to talk to you because at businesses, they're trying to draw people back, but nobody wants to be drawn back to a board stale, you know, old fashioned way of doing things. So if what you're talking about is intentionality, which I like because it's not just about gatherings, it's about everything, you Absolutely. should be intentional. So if Somebody is trying to be intentional about gatherings at work. What are some of the keys? The first we've talked about, know why you're gathering. What are some of the other keys? One of the ironies of the pandemic is that by taking gathering from us, we began to see it. We began to see, oh, we are meeting. The way we exchange information, the way we bless new life, the way we celebrate somebody's birthday is by coming together. And for two years, for three years, we had to basically pause and we couldn't meet in the same ways. And what that actually made us do is put at the center this really important question on gathering, which is when and why and with whom and for what should we meet? And in no place is that question more relevant or more contested than in the workplace. And so part of the purpose, uh, like part of the conversation, I'm a conflict resolution facil facilitator, and one of the first steps in basically helping a team figure out what is the purpose of this gathering is that you assume that people don't agree. Like when I work with teams and I, and I help them sort of reimagine a weekly staff meeting, and if you just ask the simple question, why do we do this? Not when do we do this, not like what is the purpose of this meeting? Just literally ask the people that you manage that question and have them write it down. Most of the times you'll get 12 different answers. And so part of the conversation, part of the way to become a more intentional gatherer is to first just ask, what is the need here? What is the need for this team this week that might be different from last week or that might be different than last year? And why are we actually coming together? And is that true for employers who want people to come back into the building itself, not just to the individual meetings? Do they have to be extremely intentional about explaining why we want you to come back in? The reason people don't want to come back in is not because meetings are bad. That might be part of it. But the reasons people don't want to come back in is because their life has changed, is because they've reimagined their priorities, is because they want to be home when their kids come home. It's because they realize there's less microaggressions at work when you're not walking through hallways. Right? There, these are complicated reasons why people don't want to come back. And so a huge element for building gathering intelligence in the workplace is to actually ask your, your employees, is to ask your team members, is to have conversations about four questions. And it's not, do you want to come back? That's the wrong question. I may not give you the right answer, but let me give you the right questions. Yeah. And so the first is, over the last two or three years in the pandemic, when have been moments, when we have been virtual or remote, that you longed to be in person? Write it down. Number two, what didn't you miss? Just write it down. Number three, 
what did we invent over the last three years that we might actually want to bring forward with us and experiment with? Mm -hmm. And then number four, what do we want to try anew? And one of the things that when people do this in companies with my own clients is they realize people have different answers to the different questions. And we assume, oh, no one wants to come in. And then you see colleagues who are like, oh, they like the commute. That's the hour they catch up on their podcast. Oh, they like, you know, there's, there's advantages to being in person for some types of work. And then there's other types of work that you actually benefit from being remote. And so part of building a gathering intelligence is building the discernment for when we are, need to be in person, when we can actually be virtual or remote, and when we should do hybrid. And hybrid gatherings are super complex, but they're beneficial if you need people as most of those studies that we're showing that you were just showing, most people, most meetings today are actually increasingly hybrid, and it's a very complicated thing to do well. Unfortunately, our gathering has come to the end of its time. Thank you so much, Bria Parker, for being with us. Thank you so much for having me.